Hi, this is Rachel at The Crystal Tree. <clears throat> Today I will be talking about a vinyl backdrop I found on Wish.com. It arrived folded and I do not wish to have the folds that are in the backdrop. So how do I remove them? And you can see them in the picture here where the folds are at. It's all over the entire background. And um, I wanted to know how to do it, like how to remove the folds. So I went on YouTube and uh, looked up some things and I saw a video where someone did use a steamer and they had it hanging up like as if you were going to use your backdrop and um, they actually went against the actual photo with the steam and it slowly took the creases out. Today I'm not going to be doing that because um, I do have a steamer um, attached to my <clears throat> iron but it is um, I've tried it before in the past and it didn't really work. And I'm also afraid that it's enough moisture that if you're going on the actual print that it could actually hurt the print. Um, when I use the iron today, uh, I'm not going to actually iron on the front side because that's how the picture is put on. And usually with something like this, they do it with a heat transfer to put it on. So when I use the iron, I'm going to keep it on a pretty low setting, um, hot enough to um, do something but not too hot that it will burn the um, vinyl because it could actually melt the picture or damage it. So I'm going to show you now some of the stuff that you're going to use when um, trying to get the creases out. So I have a water bottle here which has normal tap water in it. And then I have uh, my uh, iron hopefully you can see it you kind of see it a little bit here and um, it has all these little nifty buttons on it and stuff but I'm actually <clears throat> just getting it hot enough not to actually have the steam work at all on the iron it is a dry iron remember this because the steam that comes out makes the iron much more hotter and it could damage your backdrop uh, I would first um, experiment a little bit with one corner of your backdrop just to see what would happen I would start out on a very low setting um, and see how hot you can actually get your iron before it would hurt your um, your backdrop <clears throat> so right now I'm going to go ahead and flip the backdrop over. And the other thing that I ended up doing was this is a pillowcase, and um, I will flip it over and put the picture image down first. As you can see here, I've already actually started ironing already, and there is actually some still some lines. <clears throat> Sorry, some lines actually. Uh, that still appear on the back, but when you flip it over, you don't actually see the lines at all. Um, that can happen uh, that because it has been folded for such a long period of time that the creases don't actually all the way come out. And um, so just every so often kind of flip it over and see if the creases are still showing up on the other side. It won't matter if there's slight creasing on the back because when you take a photo with it, it won't show up in the photo. You'd have to really zoom in for it to show up. So what I do is I take it and I take my water bottle, the spray bottle, and I'm going to spray where the creases are. I don't have to go all over it. That um, This lets me control how much water I'm actually going to be putting down. And as you can see when I'm getting it wet, the actual image is starting to kind of bleed through. Now, like I said, the iron isn't that hot because I can go ahead and touch it with my hand, as you can see. I wouldn't keep my hand on there because I could burn myself. But then I'm going to put it down. And you want a nice, smooth, slow motion. You can even leave it for a few minutes. And see, it started to already dry the water up. And um, <clears throat> once you're done with this, what you can do um, is let it sit for a few minutes because it might still be a little bit damp. And then to store your backdrop, what you're going to do is you're going to roll it. And you want to roll it with the picture side 
So like this is the back. So if I went ahead, and you, you can see that like I got most of the wrinkles to come out already. But once it's dry, you can lay it on a nice flat surface or even the surface you were ironing on. And you just want to roll it up like you would a poster. And then store it. And then when you're ready to use it, it will un unroll and it won't have all those creases it has in it. And like you can see here that it's all nice and smooth. You can see that I still have some more ironing to do. Um, this water stain will go away because that's on the other side. It's still wet. But you can see that there's, there's still a line here and here. But once I'm done ironing it, it won't show up anymore. And the reason that you don't really want to iron on top of your photo is that, um, like I said before, it will get damaged because the way that they print, um, like let's say you take a t-shirt, you want to uh, print on the t-shirt, so they'll print it off on a piece of paper and they flip it. And so here's your t-shirt and here's the image and they put it on top. Then they have a big press, kind of like an iron, but it's a giant plate and they press it down and they um, have heat on it for a certain amount of time and then it will actually adhere or stick to the actual fabric of the t-shirt and then you can wash it and do all sorts of things with it. So the same kind of process has happened here. So that's partly why I'm telling you to turn it over is because if you iron on this, it could get the iron stuck to it. It could damage the, um, and mark it up. Like this is a white background. I mean, everything on here is very light colored. So you don't want to end up damaging that. And I felt that this really worked. Um, I did one full backdrop already with no issues or problems. This is my second one that I'm actually um, trying this with. And so far, this has been the only thing to work. I've tried putting it in the uh, dryer and it just wrinkled it a lot. I tried hanging it up for several days to see if that would get the creases out. That didn't work. And I did try to actually use a steamer, the steamer setting, um, on my, on my, uh, I don't think you can see it, yeah, on this, it actually comes forward and I can turn it on so that it actually produces steam. So this is an iron that has a steamer in it and it didn't do anything. It did not take these out. So the iron has to just be hot enough to kind of, like if I put my hand down, let's see if I can kind of hold it there for a few minutes. Okay, so this is pretty hot, but I can still keep my hand on it and the heat goes away fairly quickly. So that kind of maybe might help you to judge how hot you want to get it. And if you notice that the creases aren't going and get coming out, turn the heat up just a little bit more. It's easier for you to start out cold and get hotter. It's harder for when you start out really, really hot and then you end up destroying your backdrop. So thank you for uh, watching. Please like and subscribe.